Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Best Darn Diddly Review Show. This is a weekly podcast for anyone who loves The Simpsons or ever has loved The Simpsons, hosted by two dudes that grew up on The Simpsons. My name is Miles, better known as Mr. Most Days Off, and today it's finally here. This is going to be the worst podcast ever. Uh, At least we're going to be talking about the worst episode ever, uh, which originally aired on February february 4th in the year 2001 (laughs) but joining me as always on this valentine's week your co-host with the most and the one i choo choo choose to join me on this podcast richie the whiz kid how you doing today rich i love you too pepsi (laughs) oh wait i can't believe i said those words out loud that doesn't make any sense um i am well miles i feel very upset I have to, you know, I, I've been doing this a little bit lately where I let us peel the curtain back of our podcast a little bit. I give away some of our tips and secrets to the listeners that are still listening to us at this point. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be leaning hey, in on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be leaning in on the screen a lot this episode because we have not enlarged the text on the script yet. Oh, I and got you, homie. I can it, do that right it's now. It's killing my eyes right I now. I can do man. that right now. I just forgot. I forgot you're a blind piece of shit. But uh... yeah, Miles has to enlarge the script for me because <laughs> I don't have access to do it. So I'm just sitting here looking at the script, going, "Oh fuck, it's not going to happen." Uh, but besides that, I'm well. I'm well. I honestly, I'm going to start off. By Sorry, saying, dude. I, I just want to let you know this just says all podcasting and no play makes Miles a dull boy. So <laughs> you don't really, you don't really need it. Oh my god! <laughs> Give it to me, Marge. Give it to me. Um, but I I don't think this is the worst episode ever. I'm just going to start off by saying that. Um, I figured out the secret to always loving every single Simpsons episode, but I'll get into that later. I know I got to throw it back to you first before we start tar- talking or talking. Um, so let me throw it back to you. The man, the myth, the gut buster. I, do I have to twerk to get get me uh, get you to reveal your secrets? Because I'm like excited to hear this. Uh, no, it's just I got home from work last night. Usually I watch the episode before I go to work, but I just had a doctor's appointment. I didn't have time yesterday. So when I got home from work, I sat down all with some food and and right in front of my TV where I love to sit, not on my recliner, but right in front of the TV. And I I just imagine you like with a giant bowl of cereal. It's like Saturday morning cartoons. It's it's kind of like that, just not with the cereal, but I... My blood, sugar, <laughs> my blood sugar was low. And I mean, we brought up from type one diabetic, my blood sugar was low. And sometimes when your blood sugar is low, you just have these super crazy thoughts and it just gets really far out there and you connect all these dots that you've never even thought of before. And it, Are you sure you were I, just having an antacid drip? I'm, I always uh, think that it might be like what people are like when they get high all the time, except that I'm like super laser focused. And I've talked to other diabetics about it and they do, they have these same thoughts too. Um, but like you're really in tune with your emotions, like almost two emotional points and things that are normally just a little bit funny are freaking hilarious. And things that are just a little bit sad are like really sad. That legit does sound like acid for what it's worth. Like, <laughs> honestly, that's all like it's is. an emotionally, it's like, it puts you like more emotionally in tune with things. Yeah. But like, you've seen me when I get to the, there's a point where there's just like no return, which I guess is like acid. Same with I acid. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I like really enjoyed a lot of parts of this episode and I did not think I was going to at all. Like, I'm just going to throw that out there. So I, I remember a few times in the past, I've, I think it's like two other times that I've t- taken notes for an episode that I knew I was not going to like, but my blood sugar was low going into it. And I found a lot of enjoyment in the episode. So, which honestly, that's like, I think the opposite of good advice for most people. Cause I know that if I'm a little bit hungry, I get hangry and then I'm in like a pissy mood. I'm like, this episode sucks. I should have had a cheeseburger instead. Yeah, but like I was eating and taking notes like while yeah. I was watching it. So I had I was you were on the rise. Time. Yeah, you, you can't yeah. do it on the come down. You got to do it on the rise. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which sounds like an inverse. Uh, I do love the antacid joke on this one. Um, that's an interesting theory. Just watch with low pr- uh, blood pressure. Or I'm sorry, blow blood sugar. Don't watch with low blood pressure. That's a bad idea. Oh, mine's um, actually high right now. Yeah. Interesting. Don't do that. Is it me? Sorry. It Um, might be. I don't know. They told me I have to get one of those home testing kits to record numbers, which I've never had to do in my life before. Oh, no. That sounds real. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very scary. 
Uh, I had a thought. Now you made me lose it because I'm worried you're dying or whatever. Um, I am a diabetic. So, you know, uh, this might be my last podcast, guys. Yeah. You know, honestly, that's true for everybody on every podcast, though. Exactly. It could always be our last podcast. That's we're always never, crossing our fingers. That's never. We're always like a slight earth rotation too fast from just being flung off this planet. So it's it, it, it's all good. Damn you, uh, gravity. <laughs> We do start out this one with the chalk gag. I will not hide the teacher's medication, which is funny, even funnier if that medication is the stress relief. I assume it is. Uh, and then, or their insulin. Yeah, that too. Uh, <laughs> and then the couch gag we get on this one is a the squeaky boys teen actually valets the Simpsons couch, which I think is actually pretty good. I okay. See, that's where the episode started for me, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, I that's really funny. enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. Like, okay, that you actually remember what I was going to say a second ago, <laughs> and, uh, and it's really just that I have almost no memory of this episode. Really? Like, usually, I uh, a lot of this podcast is like us talking about like watching in the past, what we remembered about it, and comparing it to what we thought now. I'll say I very much enjoyed this episode watching it, but like. For whatever reason, I have very little memory of most of this episode. Like, I do remember the, like, uh, kids taking over the comic book store uh, and, and the secret stash room. But, like, I had completely forgotten about comic book guy going on a date with Agnes. See, that's, like, the only part I did remember about the episode. And I think playing into what you're saying, it might be because this is really the first time we've had a solo story for comic book guy. Well, and this is the episode where he gets a name, actually. According to IMDb, this is uh, when we learn that comic book guy's real name is Jeff Albertson. I still don't agree with that. Wait, why is that? He's comic book guy. Oh, honestly, yeah. uh, That's like a go-to trivia question that people always ask on Simpsons trivia and whatnot. So if you're if you're planning on attending a Simpsons trivia night, I would I would have this one in your back pocket that uh, Jeff Albertson is comic book guy's real name. Uh, Just remember the, the store Albertsons. Honestly, I say that I, I I'm in, like encouraging people to remember that. I guarantee you that if we're at a at a trivia night anytime in the future, I'll have like I don't know Justin something, um, <laughs> comic book. I because because I agree with you. His name is Comic Book Guy, and really, it's his voice that is uh, what makes him stand apart from anything else. Well, obviously, yes, that yeah. is correct. Oh no, I just closed the page I need, so I'm gonna <laughs> stall for just a moment. <laughs> the part in this episode that really I had no recollection of was the magic show, which I thought the magic show had a lot of great gags in it. Um, but I know we'll get there, and I'm sure you very much enjoyed that scene, but I, I had no memory of that whatsoever. I'm a huge Tom. If you're talking about Tom Savini, it's not even uh, really a magic show as much as it's a special effects demonstration. Uh, and yeah, I, I absolutely love that scene. And that's one of those things that it's like, I, I'm kind of surprised that I didn't at least remember his guest spot. Cause I, uh, I've been a fan of that for so long, but honestly, I could say that maybe the first time I saw this episode, I wasn't familiar with the name Tom Savini because it's like not like the Internet was as prevalent and I could look up all this nerd shit so easy. You could tell Miles really, really is into that stuff because he like underhandedly told me that I was wrong. And it wasn't a magic show. Yeah. It was a special well, I mean, show. it's not the Richie. ghost episode with Penn and Teller or like, you know, the tiger dudes. Um, it's, it's got very special he'll, he'll, effects he'll nuke, artists he'll, and he'll genius. Nuclear all day long. But he, Dude, Tom like, Savini, if you remember uh, in the Friday the 13th uh, game that we played on PlayStation for a long time, uh, Tom Savini is such a legend in the field that he got his own version of Jason in that game. He, his was like the one that was like dead and on fire. Yeah, Tom Savini got that to design bastard. that because he did so many of the practical effects for the first uh, Friday the 13th. See, the more you know, this podcast is teaching you all kinds of stuff. You know what? You uh, you really should just go check out the other the other podcast I'm joining, the Camp Slash Horror Cast, because we'll probably talk more about this there. It's a horror movie review you can catch live on Twitch every Monday night. There you go. Cool. Go see those counselors. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Honestly, I love that you love that part of that so much. I do. I do. <laughs> Like I'm you call yourselves jealous. camp camp counselors. Yeah, Do we need to come jealous. up with like a, a Simpsons ear? I don't know. I was gonna try to make it like a, a musketeer <laughs> or a, a like mouseketeer, but uh, I don't know how that works with the Simpsons. They are owned by Disney now, though. The itchy and scratchy and milesy and Richie show. Yeah, the, hey, we got some poochie in this episode actually. Yeah. So there's a lot to love about this episode. I guess we should start out. Uh, the 
Opening comes with a pancake breakfast delivered by Marge. I do like how just lowbrow immature this joke is. Like, I, I, there's like fart humor will always be funny. That is a universal truth. It doesn't matter if you are five or 55 or 105. Farts are funny. Uh, the shit. And, <laughs> and Marge doing the whole like with the bottle and getting embarrassed and like then they put a silencer on it and it makes like laser it's like pew 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 as it's shooting out uh pancakes under the griddle much better than fart noises marge <laughs> wouldn't have escaped that one uh lisa is pointing out that um oh sorry i i was trying to rehear this is where they discover that there's like been a box of baking soda in the back of the fridge that Marge explains came with the house. Mm. And Bart immediately is like, hey, dad, bet you five bucks you can't eat the whole box. Five? Why don't we make it 50? And Oh, this is, you're going to regret this. <laughs> uh, this whole bit right here comes from apparently, according to the commentary, which featured Mike Scully, Larry Doyle, Ian Maxstone Graham, Matt Selman, Emmy Award winner for this episode, Hank Azaria, Tom Gamble, Chris Kirkpatrick, Matt Cross, and Al Jean. Uh, so as I just said all those names, you'll know there's probably not going to be a lot coming from the commentary mm. today. Uh, but one of them was that this joke came from the fact that Matt Selman and Conan O'Brien both were known for around the office, basically collecting money to eat weird shit. Like uh, <laughs> just, you know, whatever it might be, like an old candy that was on the floor or whatever. But uh, Al Jean, of all people, popped up and told a story about how they convinced him once to eat a caramel off of the ceiling of the writer's room. Oh. Uh, they had no idea how it got in there. And he basically did it just to like get the fucking day on. Like he's like, <laughs> I'm tired of this argument. And he eats it. <laughs> but this one continues with Homer uh, eating the block of, uh, of baking soda. Sorry. Uh, but he basically starts tripping out immediately because he can like sense all of the decades of food that have soaked into it. And, and I Lisa, asked, Lisa's already called poison control before you even started. Uh, like, hey, poison it's me, control, just Fran, up. it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that uh, Fran just knows Lisa's voice too. <laughs> um, I love too that Homer actually does trip out and then Lisa refers to it as, uh oh, dad's having an antacid trip. <laughs> And I won 50 bucks, which opens up. We, we basically get a, a sequence with Bart and uh, Millhouse getting their money and they get to go out on the town again for a minute. They've never it, done this before. It very much reminded me of another time before, Richie, <laughs> when they got Slurpees and went, you know, Join the crazy. junior campers. Broadway style. <laughs> Uh, they go to the quickie mart where when he, they flash their $50, a poo shows them like the good stuff that you are. He locks the door. Yeah. He locks it's the like door. It's like a so private can, shopping experience. Yeah. Yeah. He can escort them around, which there's a lot of candy signs behind them in one scene. And luckily the, my streaming service that I was using usually doesn't let me back up. And I was worried I'd have to restart the episode, but it let me back up a couple of times in this one. Nice. Um, None of the candy signs were really that funny with the exception of one that I very much enjoyed, which was candy burritos. And I don't know what that's going to taste like, but it just painted a very vivid picture. I could in see my that mind. as being quite nice, actually. Maybe you've got like a gummy tortilla and then like some additional, I don't know, you could do some like hardish candy on the inside, maybe some more gummy options. But is it is it burritos shape, but candy taste or? candy shaped but burrito taste that's i'd I say burrito know. shaped candy taste would be the right option i'm gonna say both it's springfield man let's live a little i mean i, I immediately jumped my brain went to the choco taco so there you go they used to offer those at taco bell back in the day i just pictured a burrito sized piece of candy which was just massive in my brain there that would be a giant like jolly rancher essentially which i mean like i know that they sell like uh like specialty candy shops and whatnot i've seen like gummy pair uh, like a one pound gummy bear it's literally like the size of a brick i think Fair it enough. would i think it might actually kill you mm, well it would kill me <laughs> that's what i mean like i oh, think okay. it would actually kill you <laughs> uh you had already well, i jumped ahead again i'm looking at this let's let's get back to barton millhouse they're going around the town 
Uh, they are spending money on all the things that they've always wanted to things like, uh, what Millhouse's mom wouldn't let him do, which is apparently use fabric softener. Uh, and they're Milhouse- at a laundromat in their underwear, washing their clothes. And Bart and Milhouse is, not is so impressed. happy. Like yeah. he's so excited. And Bart's just like, I'm picking the next activity. <laughs> Uh, when Bill we House see the, on the edge, he's like, it's like the softest his clothes will have ever felt. Yeah. <laughs> they are down to their last $10 when they see a sign at the Android's dungeon advertising radioactive man. Number 1000 has arrived. Ooh. He puts the $10 on the counter only to be greeted by comic book guy. $10. I laugh at you. Please do note. This is no ordinary comic book. It is a permanent condition. If you spill soda on it, the drops harmlessly fly off into lesser comics. So this is a great scene and a fun uh, joke at themselves to some extent because they comic book guy pours like a Coke onto Radioactive Man 1000 and it literally just bounces off onto what they call a lesser comic. And that lesser comic is published by Bongo Comics, which is the same publisher that publishes Simpsons comics. So yeah. <laughs> uh, really, really fun little in joke for the comic book fans. Whoa. and honestly what a feature like yeah. i actually could use that on like my clothes in real life because i can't tell you how many times <laughs> i've like spilt something on myself before i've gone on stage i basically That's just have depressing. to te- keep an extra t-shirt with me at all times you should come up with like a throwaway joke you can use in that instance uh yeah i mean you kind of have you can't just ignore it because it's very noticeable mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so the kids are are impressed and comic good guys like you are quite correct to gasp also note the price, $25. You had to buy lunch for that homeless guy. <laughs> I like of all the things they could have skipped. That was the first one. It's like, oh man, what a waste <laughs> of money. Uh, and then apparently, I didn't realize this at first, but apparently Martin's mother walks in and is trying uh, to sell his uh, Martin's stuff while he's at fat camp. Uh, and she cleaned out his room. Comic book guy is immediately impressed by things like a handwritten script for Star Wars, Princess Leia's anti-jiggle breast tape, film reel uh, labeled alternate ending, Luke's father is Chewbacca, and comic book guy goes from like, ooh, ooh, to, uh, <clears throat> I'll give you $5 for the box. Sold. And Bart Milhouse, Rep Martin, to be fair, they, they, they stand up for him. It's like, don't do it. That stuff is worth a lot of money. Uh, and Milhouse is like, yeah, he's ripping you off. Well, if this is valuable, then back to the leaky basement it goes. <laughs> hmm. That's so uh, so accurate for so much stuff, I think. Her eyelashes really bothered me in that scene. There was something, that her right eye, the way her eyelashes were, it was just the animation on the bottom lashes looked like they were poking her own face. It was very awkward looking. I really would love to know how that came into the Prince household, honestly. Like, where, where, how, how well do they know George Lucas? Mm hmm. Uh, ending with Chewbacca. Oh. <laughs> uh, what ends up happening, though, is both Bart and Milhouse at first are like told, like, hey, I want to take your picture. So they smile, but they just get their Polaroid slapped on the permanently banned list, which also featured Sideshow Bob, which is his second like minor appearance back to back weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Nelson was the other person who is permanently bla- uh, permanently banned from the Android ju- dungeon. There was another picture up there, Miles. Did I miss one? Yeah, it looked like it was Matt Groening. Oh, funny. I missed that. Apparently. <laughs> uh yeah and it, and it wasn't listed on uh, imdb which is where i where i had read that that's one of the parts where i backed up again because i was trying to write down all the faces i saw nice uh back at the simpsons house homer is actually trying to like sympathize with bart a little bit and he starts talking about the first time he had a lifetime banning <laughs> uh which is at a gallagher show which if you don't know gallagher is a famous comedian who is known for his sledge matic bit where he would hit a watermelon with a sledgehammer those prop comics. I know, right? They're never going to make it in the industry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Gallagher, um, uh, basically Gallagher goes to swing his sledgehammer and Homer like yoinks the watermelon right from uh, underneath him, uh, <laughs> causing him to get his life lifetime ban, which I love that Gallagher's like, and you're banned for life from all of my performances and TV specials. But I can still see your movies, right? <sighs> Uh, fun fact about crying. Gallagher uh, Gallagher was set to perform at a dive this was like dec- a decade ago if not longer 
But I used to host a open mic at a shitty dive bar in Louisville, Texas, and Gallagher was set to perform there. Uh, and right before he went on stage, he had a heart attack and had to go to the hospital. Um, he lived. Oh, it was fine. But yeah, it was definitely like and it, this was definitely in the twilight of his career where he was no longer booking the big clubs and just kind of, you know, going around making a name on what what he once had. But, you know, good for him. I like he didn't that. Die. Good. I like <laughs> that when Homer pulled the watermelon, he hit the blank spot where the watermelon was supposed to be and the, the mallet bounced back and hit him in the face. And it was, (laughs) which is arguably funnier. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He Homer accidentally improved the app. He just didn't realize it. And he got free food. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The lifetime banning for uh, Milhouse and Bart instantly comes back to bite him in the butt because they find out that Tom Savini is going to be appearing at the comic book store uh, and he's, they do to your credit, uh, Marge describes him here as the movie magician behind creep show Friday the 13th and Dawn of the dead. But again, he's really like, he is known as like the man when it comes to special effects, especially like practical special effects, which he even jokes about here, uh, in the episode, he kind of makes fun of CGI or he's like, sure, you could do this with CGI, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they do a lot of really wacky stuff that, that seems pretty impossible, but I would argue that Tom Savini, if anybody could do it, he might actually be able to make all these things happen. (laughs) Uh, they did talk about him a little bit on the commentary and essentially, uh, he's a friend of Dana Gould, who has uh, been a writer on the Simpsons for several episodes. Uh, and Tom, uh, they all said was an absolute delight. He had a really good time with it. And he was like, he, he understood like the tone of the show and that, you know, he was coming there to make fun of himself and make fun of his craft. And, uh, I think they did it in a really fun and respectful way. They made him look like a badass. I don't know yeah, what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but I mean, he was willing to do some pretty silly stuff with like his head yeah. removal and and all that good stuff. And again, he's like, willing whole, to go all in, which is the whole uh, the whole talking about it being you know CGI uh, was really funny to me. <laughs> uh, but Homer, it seems, has a plan to get both Milhouse and Bart in for the show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miles! How could he have planned it out? He just heard about the problem. <laughs> oh you're right give me a minute hmm <laughs> then he plans it out <laughs> it's not a very good plan i'll tell you there's many problems with it for one uh homer is the top of this three-man pyramid that they make with homer <laughs> millhouse being on bottom bart being on millhouse's shoulders then homer being on his uh and then they Surprisingly wear a trench strong coat. little boys yeah for real millhouse doesn't skip leg day dude mm-hmm. um and Homer is basically trying to play himself off as a very tall man. And he introduces himself as Shaquille O'Neal, which comic book guy immediately sees is not accurate and like rips the coat away and basically is like, you can go in, but you too cannot. Thanks for the tip off. Oh yeah, dude. Homer, it basically, we revealed that Homer actually screwed them over by taking a payoff from comic book guy (laughs) to, to rat them out. I'm sorry. In his showroom, comic book guy is actually quite uh, in a good headspace. He's very happy about this situation because he's like appearing exclusively here in the Android's dungeon. Take that, Monsieur's Barnes and Noble. The king of splatter, Tom Savini. And Savini puts on a great show. Uh, he starts off by burping and claiming they had a big dinner before he does a gut buster after Woo, eating just dinner. one more french fry. Uh, and that's when uh, Bart and Milhouse are really starting to feel regretful, as after all, it should be them that's covered with blood. Yeah. I love, again, Mr. Uh, Savi- Tom explains that while computers have made big changes in the field, there will always be a place for practical effects experts. Uh, and then uh, to demonstrate his own mastery, he actually like detaches his hand. Uh, he touches his head first and he does this whole routine and then he goes to shake comic books hand, uh comic book guy's hand after he's like kind of being unimpressed uh and the hand starts to like crawl all over him <laughs> and well uh, but, he's at he also but, asked says he saw stuff like that on bewitch try to explode this out of my belly and eat some food but that food like, it's a cookie except it wasn't because uh it's actually a time release blood pack and comic book guy starts spitting up blood <laughs> that's when he tells him you sir are a perfect patsy and that's when he does the shaking his hand thing, thing. <laughs> yeah 
Uh, I love the comic book guy after he's kind of becoming the brunt of the joke when the hand starts to give him a wedgie. Uh, he's like, you mocking me? Oh, that's rich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he falls into a, a rack of wizard hats and he ends up with cones on his cones. <laughs> and everyone else is getting a kick out of this. And so everyone who laughs at him is banned. Uh, he's banning literally everyone. Banned, I tell you. Uh, but then it becomes very obvious very quickly because he narrates it that he's having a heart attack. Uh, 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 short breath, left arm, numb, can't go on. Describing Ooh. symptoms much longer. <laughs> I think he's having a heart attack. <laughs> Uh, and that actually brings us to the end of our first act, which I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about Hank Azaria here, because Hank Azaria does this voice and uh, many, many others, as we know from the show. And they actually talked to Hank a little bit about the like submitting to an Emmy process on this uh, on this episode. But it's funny because we just talked with Al Jean and it's since changed since his commentary because they were talking about at the time you could actually submit for all of your voices for one episode. But as we learned from Al Jean, they recently made a change that uh, voice actors can only submit one character for that episode. So that's mm -hmm. an interesting, uh, interesting, just, I guess, timing that we come across this uh, commentary on this episode right after having that conversation with Al. That's perfect timing. So it's fresh on our minds. Mm hmm. Uh, I also want to say that uh, Hank Azaria talked about the origins of comic book guy who he based on somebody from his college dorm uh, who was known as F uh, as, as all he would refer to him as, at least on this comic uh, or at least on this commentary track. Uh, but this F person would uh, basically, he was a huge nerd and he would actually keep an updated list every day that he would write out with his like pen and paper of the five people that he disliked the most in the dorm. Uh, and like, that's where like the origins of this character and his voice, he kind of modeled oh my the gosh. comic book guy after that. The guy's name was Jeff. <laughs> that's probably what it is. Yeah. It, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. He only called it him sounds, F, but it's it totally sounds like Jeff. F, but it's yeah. Jeff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is funny. And now I won't forget that name. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> you hacked, you hacked our trivia memory. Good job. Yes. Yeah. That's what it's all about, man. <laughs> yeah if, if nothing else we hope that you you'll win your your simpsons trivia nights if you listen to this podcast we hope you guys all forget the important real life history stuff but damn it remember comic book guy's real name yeah none of the insightful moments that we have on the show where we grow as human beings don't take that away <laughs> just no. just remember f stands for jeff don't do it for her do it for the free bar tab that's right that's right uh, and for now, we're going to do it for Act 2, because we open up with Comic Book Guy in Springfield General Hospital, where he has Homer, Bart, and Milhouse with him, along with Dr. Hibbert, who has informed him that he has suffered a cardiac episode. <laughs> Worst episode ever. ever. <laughs> but Hibbert quickly explains, oh, no, not even close. In fact, if these boys hadn't called 911, I'd be wearing that watch right now. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but you would be dead you <laughs> saved my life and comic book guy is uh like astonished that the kids that he was so mean to would save his life but after bart points it out he's like well i guess we're even no bart says yeah so after you were mean to us and comic book guys goes so yeah, now yeah, we're, yeah even. we're even hibbert goes on to say that his prognosis or is it diagnosis? Whichever. Uh, you need to avoid stress. What kind of work do you do? I run a comic book store. Oh, dear Lord. We call that profession the Widowmaker. Or we would if any of the proprietors were married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he explains that he should close down the store for a while. But comic book guy is like, I can't. I'll lose all my business to Frodo's of Shelbyville. Hibbert uh, <laughs> suggests maybe a friend. You do have friends, don't you? Well, the super friends. Uh, you should get some friends who aren't printed on paper. <laughs> what? You mean action figures? <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, <laughs> Barton uh, Millhouse volunteer to run the store, which at first comic book guy is like, oh, God, that's a terrible idea. It's like, that's a good is idea. This bizarre in bizarre world. world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, that's when Hibbert's like, Hey, you better calm down before you make me put a dog heart in there. And he's tapping him <laughs> on the chest. 
So it looks like he doesn't really have much of a choice with no friends. You'd never see him agree to it, though. Barton Milhouse just show up. At, For all at we know, Barton Dungeon. Milhouse were just like, well, he's tied up. We'll just do it anyway. That's yeah. True. It does seem, though, he came to his senses and without any actual friends, he had to take the next best <laughs> he thing came available. came to his senses. <laughs> Homer standing right there, but no, let the two 10-year-olds do it. I mean, would you not choice. put the two 10-year-olds over Homer? I mean, if, if Lisa was available, I bet that place would be running like crazy, except it would I be would, Malibu Stacy back. I would rather an adult with the understanding of money try to run a store <laughs> where you haggle the two okay. 10-year-old boys that are going to take advantage one of One person in Springfield who's an adult with an understanding of business and money who isn't Montgomery burns oh damn it i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> uh jack lalane i don't know yeah perfect all right so bart and millhouse are the best available options i want abe simpson to run the store because i think that would be <laughs> hilarious uh barton millhouse aside that well first of all millhouse keeps making sure to like call himself partner 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 and it <laughs> is very quickly going to show that bart is taking advantage of that but at least for now, they're making some changes, like making this place uh, a kid, a store for kids ran by kids. And we immediately see kids in the store reading comics right off the shelf, which is immediately uh-huh. devaluing them and also making it so people wouldn't buy them. Exactly. Would you not take it if you had a friend, Miles, you specifically? I know I might have, you know, a conscience back then, but you would steal every comic out of that store, I feel like. I don't think I'd steal every comic, but I definitely read every comic. I feel for like it. you would, if your friend was running the store, you'd go in there and try to weasel a few comics out of there at least. Okay, first of all, I would that that implies that I would like screw over a friend. If you were saying like if I had a friend to screw over a corporation with, oh, hundred percent, yes. Um, <laughs> but like I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna screw over a friend. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um. Either way, these kids are running this business into the ground pretty clearly. Uh, but they do they're have miles in it up here. They do have an adult section, though, uh, which Ralph Wiggum, of all people, is going to enter down into, except they're like, hey, you've got to be 40 inches to go down there. Bart or <laughs> Ralph kind of was just like, please. OK, but get on your tippy toes. And we get another great, great Ralph moment because <laughs> Ralph walks down to the adult section on his tippy toes and exclaims, everyone's hugging. I feel like it's a Butters watching the Lord of the Rings tape supposedly thing here. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very, very uh, on, on board with that. Um, there's actually a really funny, the, the last thing I have from the commentary, there's a deleted line here. Uh, originally, this line was was much worse and it got cut. Uh, originally Ralph actually walked down into the basement and his line was, she's hungry. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Which sounds like a subway commercial because it sounds like she's having a foot long. Uh, (laughs) Oh man. But yeah, unfortunately that one did not fly. Uh, and they did end up recording to everybody's hugging, which was still very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, (laughs) Uh, that is funny. This is where we really start to see the um, the divide and responsibility between Millhouse and Bart because Millhouse is basically doing everything and Bart is more or less just telling him what to do, such as mark down the poochie crap and then unstick all the Supergirls. Uh, <laughs> Millhouse is like, you know, we're partners. Maybe you should do some of the work. Less barking, more marking. Yes, sir, partner. <laughs> <laughs> and then as like Millhouse is starting to do all the like the the work that nobody would want to we literally hear the the doorbell ring like as he's walking like the chime or whatever the ding ding uh and then Bart's walking by in a coat and a hat like just <laughs> so on. on 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 uh point with his joke mm-hmm. weirdly enough Homer is actually giving comic book guy advice uh now that they both have a bum ticker uh, you really need to get all the friends that you can get. And Moe's is the friendliest place in the rum district. <laughs> this is going to go great, Miles. They walk into Moe's and already Mo has a gun pointed at somebody. Get out and take your Sacagawea dollars with you. <laughs> I'll give you till three. To be fair, they, no one should use this. <laughs> one. Yeah, the dude leaves on one and Mo still fires a shot. Yeah, that's uh that's funny. Comic book guy and Homer walk in and Ho- uh Mo is just like, hey Homer, who's the manatee? 
Ah, uh, now be nice, Mo. This guy's just got out of the hospital. So Mo offers to buy him a drink, but comic book guy orders cranberry schnapps, and we learn that uh, <laughs> the bottles behind the bar are actually just painted on. Your choices here are beer and uh, the egg soaking from the deviled eggs. Oh, pass. Beer is the nectar of the nitwit. Which immediately sets off the bar. Everybody is like, hey, you can't knock beer. Nobody bad mouths Duff. Uh, then, I love that was Lenny. Lenny, Lenny <laughs> yeah. he, he tries to like make like a bar knife by smashing his uh, bottle to be a broken, you know, weapon. But it's such cheap glass that it just disintegrates. And he's just like, oh, you piece of crap. Immediately after <laughs> saying, don't bad mouth Duff. <laughs> Uh, Come on, you're here to make friends. Please, if I wanted to hear mindless droning, I'd befriend an air conditioner. Ah, uh, now he's ragging on air conditioners. <laughs> hey, they uh, keep us cool in the summer, pal. Get him! They actually throw, like, uh, comic book guy literally out onto the street, and he lands with a funny, like, uh, sound effect. Yeah, and uh, if you notice, Homer did not leave with him. Uh, and he's lying there in the street wondering if there is a Klingon word for loneliness, which he is able to look up in his pocket Klingon dictionary. <laughs> yes. Dark. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know Klingon. My bad. I mean, it's in the script. I just read what's in the script. I, I also, I, my interpretation it is also sounded, in the script. It sounded like you were choking. Like That's I thought, what Klingon sounds like. <laughs> Every Klingon sense I was, I've ever I was heard concerned. has made me half prepared to do the Heimlich maneuver. I was concerned for your well-being. For the first time in our show, I was about to click over from the script to the Zoom meetings just so I could see your face <laughs> and make sure you're alive. Just to see if I'm turning purple instead of my normal shade of pinkish red. Exactly. Right on. Um, Lisa is actually impressed with the way that Millhouse is running the store, which is essentially by himself now, even mm. though she says you and Bart are really great businessmen. Well, I'm really the brains. Bart's just the eye candy. Which is a weird thing to say to his sister. Yeah. Or her, her, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I said it right. You did. Uh, <laughs> And then we get a, a person we've never seen before, a man with a ponytail who comes in and is like, hi, I'm Derek Reynolds from Plan 9 Comics. Uh, is the manager here? Well, I'm kind of the co-manager. I want to know, is Plan 9 Comics a riff on Plan 9 from Outer Space? Absolutely, it's a okay. riff on Plan 9. From, they, well, I was so going to say, that's an obvious, it's an obvious <sighs> reference to Plan 9 from Outer Space being like the worst movie. So it's implied, I think, by it's Plan the 9 worst Comics. Comic the worst, yeah. Even worse than Bongo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but this uh, response from uh, Millhouse basically being put in this position of power suddenly makes him have a, a like sudden daydream where he's in like a detective film noir and black and white. Uh, Lisa's like dressed up like a, but it says femme fatale. She's just yeah. like a dress with like the long flowers. She's always the one thing. that comes in asking for help and ends up being the killer in the end. <laughs> Tough break toots. I need a man who answers to, or to answers to no one. I need a fool manager. Hachi machi. And you can see Milhouse is kind of like the cogs are turning. So he immediately turns to uh, the, the guy and changes his answer. I can help you, sir. And I answer to no one. Wink at Lisa. <laughs> so this just happens to be the perfect sucker for this particular pitch because <laughs> this guy is showing the ultimate superhero, Biclops, who is a nerdy looking dude who looks a lot like Milhouse, complete with the thick red uh, glasses that Milhouse is currently wearing. Hey, they're kind of like yours. So immediately Milhouse is like enamored with this superhero who nobody else would ever care about. Uh, so he's like, yeah, I'm going to take 600. Or he, the guy's like, you want 500 or 600? And Milhouse is like 600 copies, please. It's, well, I mean, you could get a thousand of them and you get a he's like, oh, too bad. Point. There's a break at a thousand. Two thousand, yeah. please. Oh. <laughs> Which is just a lot of co like even the most copy uh, popular even the most popular <laughs> copies of comics uh, you're not gonna see two thousand copies sitting at one place. That sounds like a new cop superhero. Popular. Popular, yeah. The most popular cop on the block. <laughs> Uh, comic book guy is still like working on making friends. He actually has to take a class about it, and as he's entering his class on making friends, he's like, "Human contacts." The final frontier. Ugh. Out of the way, Tubby. And this is where comic book and oldie Han, or Agnes Skinner, 
uh, actually meet and immediately are mean to each other, but they could tell they start to kind of fall for each other because they're so rude to each other. You are the rudest man ever who bought me dinner. Correction. I do not believe I've ever bought you. Oh. And he realizes that she's suggesting that they, they should go out. Man, for being so hard on Skinner, she just jumps right in, doesn't she? <laughs> Back at the comic book store, Millhouse is now sitting on 2,000 copies of Biclops, <laughs> who absolutely nobody is interested in. Kearney's there, and he's actually like, Biclops? Who's his girlfriend? Lois Lame? He's kind of afraid of girls. Just perfect for, for her, uh, Millhouse. <laughs> Kearney tries to roll up the comic and hit R- Milhouse with it. And he's even disappointed by that. He's like, oh, it's even too limp for a good smack. <laughs> How could you spend all our money on a comic book published by <laughs> Lynch crafters? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never sell these. Birds won't even use them in their nests. And a crow literally returns an episode and just shreds it on the floor and leaves it. <laughs> like, okay, so I made one bad decision. Oh, it's my fault for leaving you in charge. Sometimes I forget how young you are. Hey, I'm only three months younger than you. Oh, look, you're getting cranky. You haven't had your juice. Well, my straw broke off in the carton, and that's not the point. We're supposed to be partners, <laughs> and you're pushing me around like a play school corn popper. Uh, it's vacuum cleaner, Millhouse. Whatever. I demand respect. I have feelings. <laughs> I'm a human boy, just like you. Shh. Use your indoor voice. And the writer of this episode, uh, which I'm going to have to look up real quick. Sorry. Uh, the writer of this episode was Larry Doyle. And he said, for whatever reason, and he doesn't, doesn't have an explanation for why, but I have feelings. I'm a human boy, just like you, is his favorite thing that he's ever written. <laughs> I mean, just going out of Milhouse's mouth, that you get it. It's... Yeah, yeah, it works. <laughs> Uh, Milhouse uh, actually takes his glasses off and realizes that he can't see when he has them off. So he just immediately puts them back on and then takes a running jump kick at Bart. And I love the like act break here because it turns them into like buff comic book characters in a comic panel for a second. And then that's where the act break will be. And then when we come back, it changes back to them being boys. Yeah, it is a really cool uh, like freeze frame. It, it almost uh, it's like a good version of the first Hulk movie they came out with where they kept trying to like do comic book cuts of that. Don't even remember the, the, Eric, the Eric Bana watch. Hulk I'm talking about. But that is the end of our second act, which I'll point out ends at exactly the 14 minute mark. And the yeah. first act was the 701 mark. So these two acts are like perfectly paced so far in terms of uh, being a balanced episode. Uh, and there's almost exactly seven minutes left in the show. So this is a, a <gasps> interesting breakdown. Whoa. Uh, we cut back to our third act and it starts in that same comic book pose, but then kind of shifts back to normal where we see the rest of Milhouse and Bart's fight. Bart grabs a robot that transforms into an ax. Milhouse counters by grabbing another robot, which transforms into a watering can. And he's like, oh, uh, but they, <laughs> they end up using it to fight each other anyway until one of them knocks the other through a poster of She-Hulk. Uh, which is just fun because that's a Disney property now that will be coming out on the Disney, uh, like Disney plus soon, but it Mm -hmm. was not at the time. So funny how this just became an inside reference at the time. It was not Uh, (laughs) that opens up because they just went inside the poster. Pretty much. Um, (laughs) It's, it's basically the Shawshank redemption style where it's covering, covering a hole in the wall. Uh, and he looks, they, they discover it's basically comic book guy's secret stash and it's filled with nothing but bootleg videotapes, which are kind of uh, fun, like silly and outdated by today's standards. But when this came out in 2001, uh, YouTube, if it was a thing, it had just barely been a thing and it definitely wasn't the thing that it is currently. Uh, and videotapes are still the only way to get this like really old, weird footage. Whoa, alien autopsy, illegal alien autopsy. Godfather 3, good version. He even has a tape of Kent Brockman picking his nose. Look, he's picking his nose. (laughs) Uh, So we see that the boys just found a whole bunch of interesting things to watch. I bet not all of it uh, age appropriate, but we'll find out or we won't. I don't know. Maybe uh, that all got put in the adult section. But for now... (laughs) Skinner and comic book guy are, uh, or I'm sorry, comic book guy is actually at Skinner's house waiting on Agnes to be ready for her date. And they just kind of sit awkwardly principal Skinner and comic book guy in the, in the living room as a clock, like very loudly ticks. Uh, 
Agnes calls down, I'll be right down. I'm just putting on my witch hazel. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't get that joke. I had to look it up. Uh, witch hazel is, it's like something that people used to use for, for something. I, I, could, <laughs> I could not figure out why this joke made sense. I'm not going to lie. But it has witch in it, so you're, that's that's the funny part. It uh, it often and it's a really old thing with uh, rubbing alcohol. I, mm. I learned, but I don't know why that matters. <laughs> I'll I read love... the definition. Witch hazel is a plant. The leaf bark and twigs are used to make medicine. You may see a product called witch hazel water. Uh, this is a liquid that is distilled from d- dry leaves, bark, and partially dormant twigs of witch hazel. So, so she's do a with witch. That what you will. I love that comic book guy after she says that just sitting there going, so uh, your mother tells me you go to Springfield Elementary. Like it's just <laughs> <laughs> the, the stepfather meeting of the son, basically. But, you know, they're both around the same age. Yeah, yeah. Skinner exactly. might be older, if anything. It, it's weirdly awkward, though, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and But Skinner even goes into the whole, like, exactly what is your interest in my mother? She makes me laugh. And on cue right there, she actually comes like sliding down the banister oh. of the uh, of the rail in a, in a flapper outfit. Uh, and Skinner is absolutely appalled. Good Lord, mother, I can see your. Oh, figure. you see a lot more when you see my daily mole check. <laughs> Skinner is embarrassed. What I do for my allowance money is nobody's business. He's not nobody. He might even be your new daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out that comic book guy gets all up in Skinner's business, man. I'm pretty sure he's the one that tears Edna away in one episode in the future. So I don't know what his deal is with Skinner, if they had some kind of beef outside or if he just happens to be his accidental wingman. But this dude's coming after all Skinner's ladies down the road. Yeah, interesting. I'll I'll be interested to look for that moving forward if we have some sort of like weird rivalry between Skinner and the comic book guy. <laughs> Because if I remember, there's an episode where Edna leaves Skinner and uh, Skinner goes to stop their wedding at a Comic Con when they're both in cosplay. Oh wow, I and don't Skinner have any memory of that woman. one, so I'll have to I'll have to keep an eye out. That's probably yeah. like season. That sounds like season twenty. <laughs> I'm just throwing out a guess. <laughs> Uh, we see Milhouse and Bart back at the secret stash, and this time they're watching a police informant video that was not supposed to leave the station. And it turns out it's an interrogation of Chief Wiggum asking uh, Flanders some questions. I really hate to be a snitch. Don't worry, your yellowed belly ratting will be held in the strictest confidence. Well, in that case, my neighbor Homer released a radioactive ape in my house. It's a, uh, it's taken over the whole top floor. It wasn't dad's fault. That ape tricked him. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I love that follow up. <laughs> we also get a video of Mr. Rogers <clears throat> drunk, which they play the tape. Uh, uh, and he's all like, what? What do you mean? I can't take off my sweater. I'm hot. <laughs> um, you know, I bet kids would pay to see this stuff. We could have a midnight screening right here in the store. And Bart's like surprised that that's actually a really great idea coming from Millhouse. Really? Well, I was due. I'll say, partner. Oh. I want to back up real quick and talk about the Mr. Rogers thing because one, I adore Mr. Rogers, and two, <laughs> um, Mr. Rogers' wife actually they ran into uh, Mr. Rogers' wife at some sort of event. Uh, and basically she made it clear that like, she's like, Oh, you are the guys that made fun of my husband or whatever. And they said it was a little bit awkward and they felt kind of bad. However, I happen to know, uh, like it's pretty well known. I should say that Mr. Rogers was a huge fan of Eddie Mur- Murphy's SNL bit where he did Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. And it was basically <laughs> like a ghetto parody of mr rogers and uh basically eddie murphy would do it like as if mr rogers lived in the hood uh so honestly i kind of feel like like mr rogers might be okay with this joke i will say though it is one of those things that he was comfortable with that mr robinson joke because it was on like a an isolated program program exclusively for adults so if he did have a problem with this, I would say it's probably because it was a cartoon and he knew some kids would watch it. Uh, but well, it maybe also the drinking makes me aspect think of it. it maybe, but I mean, it makes me think that uh, he would, he would understand and, and laugh it off. I don't know though. Again, they, they got the impression that Mrs. Rogers wasn't so, so keen on it. 
my thing is is like usually you know when people get drunk they app act absolutely ridiculous and their version of mr robin oh gosh now I get- <laughs> <laughs> of mr rogers acting ridiculous is just him taking off the sweater like that's <laughs> yeah and like, getting kind of angry about it yeah I that's that's the extremist thing on it and that's what makes it funny to me sure sure uh, we get another really funny bit that has nothing to do with anything. It's just uh, Homer and Marge go to the squid uh, squid court. I'm sorry, squid port food court. Uh, say that five times fast, which offers cuisine from all over the globe. It's very much uh, they're kind of parodying like Epcot Center, it seems, where like mm-hmm. you can eat like, you know, from everywhere. But I love that they go to two different places uh, like Marge is like Mediterranean and, and uh, Homer does Japanese or something. He, he and- does English. Yeah, that's right. It's a London, it's London Royal. Royal. Uh, but it doesn't matter, it turns out, because it cuts down below and we see all the like tubes go to all these different kiosks and they all go to the same vat that says all purpose meat. And there's just a guy with tongs who puts it on a different different tube, depending Whenever on the light lights which one up lights that up. vendor, they put it on the belt that yeah. goes up to him. <laughs> so you're getting the same shit everywhere you go, which is probably more true than we realize. And it's funny because when Homer and Marge both have their food, like it, they don't even really point it out, but their plates of food look the exact same. But they're still both happy they got their their thing yeah. they wanted. Yeah. Uh, they come across comic book guy and Agnes, who they see as being in puppy love. Uh, but their version of puppy love is a little bit different than most couples because they are just basically enjoying the like misery in others together. That's what brings them together <laughs> is how much they get off on other people being sad, mad, or embarrassed, or you know, in, in a pickle essentially. They That's go all that to- any of us can ask for, man. Right. Uh, I know I love to make kids cry. That's like one of my favorite things to do outside of this <laughs> podcast, but uh I, I get a kick out of they go by like a fire hydrant and comic book guy just happens to have a wrench so he can turn yeah. it off and make him cry uh they skip a stone across the pond which on its own seems kind of sweet until it hits somebody's toy boat and it sinks and you can see the kid with, with like the remote control just crying as the ship goes down <laughs> and those things are expensive dude probably even more yep. so back then so that was actually a really mean one yeah he'll live well Right now, Bart and Milhouse are trying to make a living with that illegal uh, underground midnight watch party of these uh, these tapes in the secret stash. Bart warns that once this next tape starts, it will not stop because that button is broken. <laughs> Let's watch. And it starts out with a general addressing the room. If you're watching this tape, you are the president of the United States. Hello, sir or madam. Uh, hopefully, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and even Bart is like, got, got that, that right. right. And him and Miles <laughs> high five. Oh, geez. The general continues. Springfield has been classified for nuclear whipping boy. In the first moments of a nuclear war, Springfield will be bombed at will by all friendly nations to calibrate their missiles. <laughs> yeah. Woo! And now for total security, I will terminate the cameraman. He shoots the guy right there on the screen. Oh, thanks a lot, Steve. And again, the kids are eating this up, like laughing their asses off at this very serious. <laughs> what a terrible video! <laughs> and they unfortunately don't get to uh, explore too much. There's thousands of tapes on the wall. We only got to see these because the police raid the room. Uh, some of the kids start trying to escape the room by diving through the posters in the wall, like hoping there would be an additional secret exit, uh, and it doesn't work. Uh, Wiggum's on the scene. Well, well, well. This place has got more pirated tapes than a uh... a Chinese Kmart. Wow. Well, that'll have to do. Uh, are these your son? No, sir. We're just exhibiting them for profit without permission. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, but the owner is m- in more hot water than uh... a Japanese tea bag. Oh, geez. Why don't you lay off the Asians, Lou? <laughs> <laughs> We cut back once again to comic book guy and Agnes who are now straight up getting it on. Uh, comic book guy is even like, you've changed me, Agnes. Maybe there is room in my store for romance comics. Nobody will buy those. Your store smells. Now kiss me, funny face. But unfortunately, their romance is cut off earlier. Maybe fortunately for us because Wiggum bursts through the door. All right. Oh, oh dear God. Uh, cover your eyes, boys. <laughs> it's okay man it doesn't affect you you're not human <laughs> that's lou talking to eddie 
Uh, comic book guy, you're under arrest for possession of illegal videos. But we'll reduce your sentence if you put your pants on. Fast, Scott! <laughs> Come on, Romeo. They can cuff comic book guy. Uh, he's calling out. They can't call me. They can't lock me up for long, Agnes. Will you wait for me? Are you crazy? My bones are half dust. <laughs> I want to point out, Miles, to further my, my theory that he's got it out for Skinner. I'm pretty sure that apartment complex is the same one that Edna lives in. Wait, does it? Oh, Edna Krabat. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, so I they, meant Agnes for a second. So, I I mean, if they're in the same complex, it, you know, uh, already it's right more there. Of a, it's more of a comic book guy harem at this point than a compartment complex. <laughs> I love the the reset on this one because they literally just kind of announce it basically. But uh, Bart and Milhouse are walking down the street after uh, after uh, comic book guy has been arrested, and Milhouse points out that they may not have the store, but at least we're friends again. Yep, and we haven't been to school in days and days and days. Well, look like every looks like everything's back to normal. And again, they just kind of call out the fact that you know they're just resetting the episode. And so there's no one to run the comic book store. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, and we also see that Flanders drives by with a big green glowing ape in his passenger seat, and the ape is just smacking the crap out of Flanders. Look, if, if you want me to turn, just point that. Ow. Basically, Ow. Flanders keeps driving down the street and it's like he can't figure out where the monkey wants him to go and he just keeps getting smacked for? over and over again. Ow! 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 And we end this with the normal... They turn the wrong end- way at one point, too. Yeah, so. they do. They go the wrong <laughs> way. He's like, I can't even turn that way. Uh, we get the normal end credit music, except for instead of getting that shh at the end with the Gracie sound effect, it's actually Agnes saying, why, you ill-mannered sack of crap. <laughs> Uh, and that brings us to the end of our third act and to the end of the worst episode ever. And Richie you already said it wasn't, but uh, I, I know it's not the worst episode ever in your opinion, but do you have anything else to say? Or does that book of yours have anything else to say about what they have titled the worst episode ever? I, again, just want to reiterate that I just don't remember enjoying this episode as much as I actually did rewatching it and even just thinking about the episode like right now and thinking about the setup in my mind i'm like yeah hey, it's about comic book guy i don't really don't want to watch a 22 minute episode just about comic comic book guy um but I, on paper I it doesn't one, sound like it's gonna fill out a good episode does it like it sounds no, it like doesn't. he's he's usually like a one bit maybe a couple line like one liner type of uh yeah, but there was something about it that works. And I don't know if it was the the boys running the comic book store was a, a good B plot, I feel like, in this one. Um, because it had a lot of funny antics in there, but like it and was it just, naturally connected. Yeah, which doesn't always happen with the B plot. Um, it was they didn't even have to reconnect those plots at the end either. Mm-mm. They got to just stay their own separate. Everything thing. wound up perfectly into like a little box and and na- it felt very natural. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, I mean, this one was just a lot of fun, man. I, I enjoyed it. It's not gonna be in my top five um but it's definitely like just moved up in my head mentally is more rewatchable than i remembered it being because i guess it's been a while since i mean if this were the last episode of this season it probably would make my top five and i i you know i don't remember enough of the last half to say it, it won't still but um uh, you know bold statement to say it won't make your top five yeah uh, i'm usually pretty good at uh keeping those in check in my head that's fair that's fair how do you feel, uh, Miles? I, I I pretty much agree with everything you said. I it's one of those like on paper it doesn't sound like it's going to work, but comic book guy is a great character, and it was fun to see them explore more into his uh, his story than you normally get to. The guest star on this one was fantastic with Tom Savini. I thought that was really fun. So this one definitely is up there on my list. And I always love a good Barton Millhouse storyline. I almost wish that that would have gotten more screen time over the a plot. comic book guy and Agnes is dating. Uh, but then it wouldn't be the worst episode ever, would it? No, it wouldn't. Yeah. But yeah, this one was fun. I'm glad that we got to review it. Uh, It's been on a string, in my opinion, of episodes. Honestly, probably if I had to say, and without like going too detail, it might be the last five episodes we watched have been my favorite five episodes of the season. Funny how that works out. Yeah. Oh, I mean, realistically, the only one up top that has even a chance of getting uh, itself in there is A Tale of Two Springfields, really. But um, 
I don't know. Now I'm looking at them again, and, and, and <laughs> this is why I hate the top five, bottom ones. That's, that's, the season, the, uh, that's the season. That's the season finale. Spectacular. Finale now, right? Yeah. For yeah, now, guys, now. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Best Darn Diddler Review Show. Richie, where can they follow us online? You can follow Miles, as always, at Mr. Most Days Off. You can follow myself at the Wiz underscore Kid23. I guarantee you I see the notifications when you follow me, even though I never respond. <laughs> Most importantly, you can follow Miles at Mr. Most Days Off. That's D-I. Well, nope, I fucked that up. <laughs> Dang it, two of the last three weeks. You can follow our show at Best Darn Diddly. That's D-I-D-D-L-Y. I don't know who I am anymore. Worst send-off ever. I think that's the uh, second worst. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make sure you come back again. we got a couple of fun episodes coming up. Uh, Richie and I are going to see a double feature of Uncharted, the movie, and uh, Jackass Forever coming up next week. So we will probably talk about both, both of those uh, things on a future Best Darn Everything. And the next Simpsons episode we're going to be reviewing is Tennis the Menace. And dang it, we demand your respect. We have feelings. We're human boys just like you. Well, some of you. (laughs) And until next time, be cromulent to each other.